Hi, I am Cesar Santos and today we're gonna go over my sketchbook tour number three. So here I am again and man, I thought my head was square, but he beat me. I'm gonna keep going with the same sketchbook as sketchbook tour number two. If you wanna check out my previous sketchbook videos, click the link here so you can check out the previous um, videos. I'm gonna catch up with the page I left off last time. I believe we had this one and now I'm gonna flip one page and go to this one. This first page that I wanna talk about shows half of the plain uh, head, this head here, which shows the perspective, the simplified planes of a head. We all share these planes in different proportions. I can use this for a female face, and the way I use it is that if I take a photo and I don't recognize some of the half tones or the light, I can always come to this, look at it, and see what the values are more clear and make decisions on what to change according to my model or my reference. This will help a lot so you can understand how the values transition throughout the face. This cast is not that popular. I haven't seen it hanging in most studios when I visit. I'm gonna put the link for this cast in the description below so in case you wanna buy it, you can just click there and, and purchase it yourself. For me, it has been a great help. I actually used it too in my instructional video Secrets of Portrait Painting. This is one of the casts that I show. Actually, you can move it around and light it up in the same position that you're painting your model so you can refer to it. In the drawing that I described the planes, in the other half, I decided to put the drawing of the skull. The skull is very important because this bone structure is what's gonna tell you of what's going on underneath the skin. So when you're painting, you know what points are poking out where the bones is showing, when less bone and more softer mass is showing and the way to represent these different planes around it. Sketchbooks are always a little bit more intimate, more personal. I'm showing my sketchbook now, but I've done dozens of sketchbooks and most people haven't seen those. Even though it's a contradiction that I'm saying that these are private things for you to study, but at the same time I'm showing it to you, it still shows the temperament of the artist. It shows my temperament. I am more of a meticulous person who studies things, even art a little bit more scientifically and ask questions about things. And you will see this um, thinking process in my sketchbook. I like to actually solve problems. I like to discover things, um, investigate them and take them to a finish. Some uh, pages are gonna be showing a little bit more of a loose kind of sketch. Some other pages a little bit more studious, uh, meticulous. In this other page, you will see more of studies or of different uh, planes around specific areas. Here I studied from a Russian book, more specifically, the planes around the eyes, around the mouth. There are two types of mentality as artists, ones that idealize this uh, world of perfection, and the other one is the one that shows the world as it actually is. We have different examples of these approaches throughout our history. We have the classical artists and we have the more naturalistic artists, even more personal artists that don't even want to go to nature or to that idealized world, but instead to represent a personal vision that is unique. I think your finished paintings, your finished works that you will show to galleries or expect to, to show the, to the viewers, to the public, they should represent the sketchbook work that you do. Otherwise, it would look like you did a production for the outside, for the public, and then inside in the sketchbook, you might be more brainstorming and creative and unique. And I think your challenge as an artist is for you to try to have the sketchbook be reflected on your finished works. Here are two samples of my copies of, of Sargent. It's really difficult to do sergeant because it's hard to copy brush stroke by brush stroke. You can see the looseness of the application in his paintings, but once we try to copy it, we tend to blend in and, and render more than necessary. That's why it's important to copy different styles of painting and to try to be economical with the brush stroke. Sargent is the master at simplifying brush strokes and the general idea, getting the impression really quickly. And that's why I copy his portrait sometimes to try to grasp that direct, easy looking application, which is not. 
Richard Smith said it very clear in his book when he said, just because it looks loose and impressionistic and easy doesn't mean that it was done that way. Actually, it's harder to make something look easy and fast. These copies are done from reproductions. I go to the museum, take pictures and copy them in my studio. Then I, what I do is that I take the sketchbook back to the museum with my copy, perhaps in the early stages and write notes of the difference that I see. For instance, maybe a value is a little bit lighter than what it needs to be or, or the colors has to go a little bit more chromatic. Then I make uh, notations of those and go back to my studio and fix them. In this page, I decided to draw the lines for the cast just to make sure that, for instance, the front of the nose here is lighter than the side and this side here is also light because it's facing the light but as soon as it turns back it's further from the light so it gets darker and you can see how darker it is all the way towards the ear then a little bit less dark and gradually getting lighter like that and that's what described the three-dimensional forms but to represent form we have to realize that this whole thing is a cylindrical form and the front area is going to be in general lighter than everything that's happening back here on the side of, of the face. For this copy of Buro, what I wanted to learn was the transition between the profile against the hair. So you can see here a lot of the work around the hair transitioning into the flesh, how you need to have warmer touches in between the hair and the flesh. Under here, I left it with the underpainting stage and just dedicated and focused on this area here. And I thought it was enough and I left it like that. In this page, I was excited to go to Boston where this painting is to compare it with the real one because I did this painting just from a, from a reproduction and I didn't have access to the real one until a couple of years after I did the copy. Before I paint, I prepare the page with gesso. I put a ground color. You see this brown underneath is a camping tuda just to kill that white, bright white from the paper. And I put it there just to help me out with the, with the process of the portrait and to be friendly with the other colors that I'll put. I get a question a lot about the dark skin tones and I will probably do a video about darker flesh colors, how to paint each individual complexion with its power and with its full potential. What is the difference of those things? I saw this painting in Chicago and decided to copy it just to explore with the palette. And I realized that it's basically the same palette. It's just a matter of shifting the values towards the darker um, area and then leaving the lighter touches for the highlights for the front of the, of the form receiving the light. Now on the following page, you will see my punishment, my pleasurable punishment is a bunch of casts just like this. So this cast again comes into play for this session of the sketchbooks because not only is it important to have it and to look at it, but actually to study it. You see here, the light is facing us, making the shadow turn away, going away from us. This is more of a friendlier approach than if you have something like this, where you are closer to the shadow and the light is on the other side. Shadows are something that we normally relate to backgrounds of dark areas, unknown, and if you put the darks in the front, they tend to contradict that welcoming aspect of a painting. Unless you're doing it for a purpose, a particular mood that you want to create, it's better always if you look for the lighter areas to be facing you. There is no way to shortcut your way into mastery. Remember, everybody that you appreciate and every, every artist that you admire did a lot of work. They didn't stop drawing. They didn't stop investigating, studying. Even when you're doing a study or a sketch, pay attention, analyze it. Every mark you make has a reason and study that reason and why you're putting it there. As a side note here, I went to Brazil and as my wife wanted to get a tattoo by my friend, Ricardo, he said, as a payment, I want you to do a tattoo on me. And for the first time I got to experience doing a tattoo. He's a brave man. He asked me to tattoo this plain head on his leg. It ended up being pretty cool. I think he still has it, uh, obviously. <laughs> and the last page I want to show you, 
I have a painting here, a copy of a Spanish artist. And for this, I wanted to create the sense of texture in the lights. And what I did was that I applied a lot of paint around the light areas and I let it dry. After it was dry, I got ink with water and put it all around, all on top of the, of the portrait and then wiped it off. And that's how you can see a more uh, defined, described texture. Always remember that the moment to put the greens and the cool tones is around the shadows. So the light is what keeps the chroma clean. And as soon as the form starts turning, that's the indication to put the cool areas before the shadow begins. That is all for today. I am actually almost done with this sketchbook. So in the next sketchbook tour, I will complete this sketchbook and move on to another different sketchbook, perhaps a little earlier sketchbook because this is one of my most recent ones. And even though I started a new one, I want to go back a little bit so you can see the transition from before and how my mentality might have changed as I develop my art. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button, share, watch the videos again. I don't know because your response is what keeps me motivated to share my knowledge and do these short videos for you every week. It's a lot of work. I'm doing drawings. I'm doing paintings. I'm doing blogs. I have a wife. I mean, I'm glad I don't have kids. And for the Italian and the Spanish viewers, please be patient. I don't have time for pleasing everyone. It's a lot of work already. See you next week. Thank you for watching. Oh, I need to wrap this video up. Chica, 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 I have a drawing here. I have a painting there, but the sketchbook is the center of creation everywhere.